Mm. Very good morning to you all. Today we have Miss Elsa Shar Johnson, our guest to give a lecture on uh, data analytics with Python. She is a research scholar in the field of uh, predictive analytics for dioptic prediction and the classification under the guidance of uh, Dr. Professor G. Uma in the Department of uh, Instrumentation Control Engineering, NIT, NIT Trichy. She has been awarded the Prime Minister's Research Fellowship by MHRD, Government of India. I welcome uh, Shari Johnson to give her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. Yes, you can continue. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Anubha Madhrajan. Um, good morning, respected professors present here and all the students who, are, who have come to this webinar. So as uh, sir has said, I am Elsa Sharu Johnson. I've been a part of research fellow uh, and I'm in instrumentation and control engineering in Department of Instrumentation and Control Engineering in NITT. So this lecture series will be a series starting with an introduction to science, as well as um, it will be continuing with the data analytics uh, using NumPy, Python, and then data visualization. And then finally, we'll be look, looking at how to go about an industry data. So, So let's move on to the presentation. So this is the overview of the lecture series. And today, I'll be giving an introduction to data science. What data science is, how to go about a data which you are getting, what are data analysts doing in the world, and uh, how many different type of types of data structures are there. So in between, you can post a in the chat window and uh, I'll take up the questions after the presentation and uh, you can interact by the, by, uh, by the chat window. So why are we talking about data science? Why it is so having such a hype now? Because the growth, you can see the graph there, it is having an exponential growth with a growth of about 28% annual growth rate. Data analysts in working workforce are growing at only 5.7% growth rate. So you can see them in that picture. They are looking at different walks of life, studying oceans, geology, many other things, images. They are looking at images. So at different walks of life, they are um, analyzing the data. But the growth of people in this type of workforce is very less currently, and uh, there is po possibility of many vacancies in this field. So what is data science? So Professor Hector Molina, professor in the Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering in Stanford University, has told that Data science is a new term, but in the same sense as Columbus discovered new continent 1,000 years ago. That is, it is a new term, it's growing up. So we can say that data science is a combination of three main fields. You should have domain knowledge, you should have a knowledge of Python, and you should have a knowledge of statistics. So these three areas would be in data science. So data science includes scientific methods, real world applications, data consulting, data research, data technology, statistical computing, statistical modeling, visualization. So data science, it's a multidisciplinary. It uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from structured and unstructured data. It has, it has a concept. Its concept is to unify statistics, 
data analysis, machine learning, and their related methods to understand and analyze actual phenomena. And it employs techniques and theories drawn from many fields within the context of mathematics, statistics, computer science, and seen that uh, many people are here present in uh, from different departments. So this particular field can be used by all of all of you present here. So why we are learning about data science? So it's a common sense field. Like when you grow to go to a grocery store, for breakfast, people usually buy bread and butter. OK. So what can you guess what the con customer will buy next? Can you put in the chat window if you can guess what you think the customer will buy next? Like that customer, particular customer, is going for uh, having a simple so Window, if you have the answer. OK. Yeah. Any other answer? I have got one answer. Mm. Yeah, OK. I, I have got milk, eggs, then jam. Yeah. Cheese, ketchup. OK. All right. The, yeah. These might be your options. Most of the people has replied milk, and uh, it's also dominated by jam also. So um, yeah, so usually the shopkeeper will know, no? It might be usually the usual, you have bread, butter is there, then you need something to drink. So you'll be going for milk, actually. It's generally seen that customers who usually buy bread and butter would likely to buy milk too. So what the choice of the shopkeeper will be. To increase his sales, he can place the milk rack nearby. I mean, you'll get milk now, no? You can place it nearby the bread and butter section so that the customers will buy, go and buy, go and take it, buy that thing. OK. So it doesn't mean that everyone will come and go, because many answers I have seen less jam also. So how will the shopkeeper know? he'll need to find out how they are behaving from many days, for many days. OK, so this is what data science also does. So for example, one of the online retail stores, uh, Amazon, it'll uh, recommend you things based on what you have done in your history and how many other customers are doing. It collects data from you. So you shop on Amazon, for example, you're going to buy a mobile phone. Immediately, you'll find out you can, these customers also have viewed these things. And also, you'll get recommendations on how, on which back cover or uh, screen guard to buy and the uh, different designs of screen guard. And now, see, like many of the models will have a extended warranty or screen protection like that. Some things, extra things might, so, might also come. So how are they doing that? Do you think there is a man who's sitting behind each and every customer who comes to Amazon and uh, recommends it? No, it's not done by, like that. It takes in a fraction. So it is done by a machine learning algorithm, which gives recommendation based on what other customers have done in history. OK, so that is how data science work is very important nowadays. So moving on to data, what is data? Data is a raw facts from which the required information is produced. That means, um, what is its difference from information? So I'll tell you an example of, uh, I'll just tell you, I have six chairs and a table in a room. OK, from this specific information, can you tell where I, what room I am referring to. Can you uh, do that? No, right? Because I'm, I have just told six chairs and a table. If I, I have some more words to it, like six chairs and a table in nearby my cabin where everyone comes and sits and we have discussions. 
So if I say like that, you'll know that I'm referring to a conference room or a meeting room. Okay. But at the same time, if I'm using this in a different context, like I'm saying six chairs and a table, and it's nearby my, nearby my drawing room, and here we, our family members, will have, um, will eat and sit together. So then the context has changed. Now that data is referring to a dining room or a dining table. Okay. So access data, when it gives some information, it, it gives some meaning, it becomes information. Okay. So what are data scientists doing? Data scientists, it's he, he or she is a professional pro responsible for collecting, manipulating, analyzing, and interpreting data. And the main role is to create actionable plans for companies and other organizations. So these are the different traits that data scientists should be having. They should have st st statistical thinking, technical acumen, multimodal communication skills, curiosity, creativity, and grit. It's statistical thinking. It means that this person can work with any given data. So when you go to a company and uh, or when you're doing a research problem, you can get data from different sources. So you should have a thinking ability to implement a toolbox full of techniques and to make predictions and recommendations. And uh, you should be able to ask questions from the client. So when you sense that some fishy behavior is there in the results. So statistical thinking should be there. And that person should have a technical acumen. What, does, what do you mean by that? They should have a hacker spirit. And they must, must be, my, should be up to date with what's happening in the world. And another step, they should be able to work as a team and lead people to move at the speed of demand. Because in, when you're working in a company as a data analyst, you'll have some demand and it has to be completed in a specific time frame. Then multimodal skills, what is that? It's a study in context and translate a problem and its solution. And this problem should be told and should be communicated across parties with varying backgrounds. So what, what the meaning is that in a company, there might be people from many different backgrounds. Your company might be a healthcare company. So you just won't be having Healthcare professionals also. You'll be having people from management background. You'll be people from um, technical background. So you should be able to communicate your ideas to all these people. So it's multimodal communication skills are required, and should be able to use common ground, metaphor, skillful listening, and most importantly, you should be able to tell your findings as a story. You should be very great in story. Okay. So next, curiosity. That's an invaluable soft skill of asking why and how. And it can be used in the following case. It could be triggered in the following cases, like these persons should have the curiosity to ask for access to more data so that your results can be improved. Then would be willing, that be willing to interview users and should have the curiosity to try something new in the next iteration. Because these uh, programs that you are doing with data science and machine learning, they'll have different iterations and better performance can be achieved only while you some, do some new things or try some new iteration. And uh, next is creativity. Creativity means it's a fuel for skillful communication uh, it requires very hard dedication and effort. It's a hard work also, and you should have a peculiar relationship with the word no. Like when you are telling no to a particular uh, conversation, you should say like, wait, hold on, let me think. That means you can say no, but you should have a, 
that problem that means you should think about another creative method to go around that problem next is a grit grit means an inner drive that pull and keep us walking over obstacles and roadblocks so um, challenges in this particular field can drive a reasonable person to an unplanned leap of actions and uh, we should have a taste for tackling the new and the unknown so these are the character traits that a data scientist should be having the reality of data science so you might have seen many science fiction movies and in those science fiction movies you'll be seeing machines who can talk think and do many varieties of work different varieties of work can walk can drive all these things you have seen in uh, sci-fi movies so the reality is that it has a hype and uh, the reality is that the machines can't learn any arbitrary new task of on their own but a human can okay so you might be hearing about many robots which has developed still it hasn't come on par with the intelligence of a human so then why have we gone for data science the thing is that even if a human brain is so intelligent the task which needs repetition and uh, the task which need to be uh, fast manner can't be done by humans humans are a little slow on repetitive works they can think they can reach a solution but this solution can't be executed fastly so what in data so what data science is doing is that humans will think they'll go on the data they'll find out how it can be done how to be how the particular problem can be solved and this relation they'll make the machines to learn so then after learning machines will execute that specific work and one more thing one more reality of it is that there is no them or solution that can work best in all for example while uh, detecting a disease usually it's a classification program a problem like if you have the disease or you does have the disease but just this same algorithm can't be directly applied for predicting the house price or the car price or predicting how how much you would be charged when you take an uber or an ola okay so machines can't generalize its intelligence and start a completely new work it has still to be achieved that specific task so uh next we'll move on to the problem solved by data science i the clear with the ideas now can you put yes if you are is everyone clear with what i've told okay thank you so what are the different problems so first one is a classification it means you have images of a dog and a cat so you have many different images and that's labeled so these labeled data are given to a model for training training it categorizes a set of data classes so then after training a new data is given a new image is given that it doesn't have any so that new data is given for prediction and if the output is coming as a cat it's a very good model okay the cat data is given but it's not labeled the result is coming as a cat so we have created a very good classification model so classification means the output the target would be countable we are all already know what all different classes the new data will fall into uh, one person has um can you tell me if it's is there any doubt um 
Okay, if there is any question, you can ask at the end. Mm, next is uh, re regression. Regression means the output won't be countable. It will, it will predict a specific value, but the value is continuous. The output will be continuous value. That means it's methods that allow us to predict a continuous outcome based on the value of one or more multiple predictor variables. For example, car price prediction. So the predictors would be mileage, year of the model, fuel type, etc. And based on this, the outcome will be price. The price of the car will be changing. Next is uh, anomaly. So it refers to the identification of anomalous data or outliers and observations that differ majorly from the rest of data. For example, you are a person who are spending about 400 to 1,000 rupees every month, okay, in online shopping and anything like that. So in between that, you are trying to pay for a cost abroad, like it's a currency is in dollars. Or for example, you say you're trying to buy some gold. Value will immediately range to 50,000 on life like that. So whenever you're trying to do this type of transaction, the bank knows that your spending pattern is like between 400,000 or maybe up to 10. So whenever it detects an anomaly in your spending, you'll get a call immediately or you'll get a message that you have accessed your card this much and uh, if it's the if it's uh, a fraud if you suspect fraud you have to block it immediately like that you'll mess you'll get a message or you'll get a call for confirmation so this is detection is uh, done in fraud detection in banks okay next is uh, recommendations so recommendations offering of relevant suggestions to users based on product or service that means Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, even Amazon. I have told this example at the beginning. So they all recommendations. So what based on what you like, based on what movies you have watched earlier, they'll be recommending you movies. So one of the important cases that I've come up before it's I think it's in um, 2006 or something. You can read it um, later. It's based on an a uh, store chain in America and its name is Target. So the Target at the initial days of data science, when data science programs are budding up, these Target person um, chain, uh, they have used the prediction method to customize your, customize giving discounts and uh, certain recommendations to your particular customers. So they have done like they have they'll uh, get uh, what all things you have bought in the um, in the pre recent days and based on that and what all inputs you are getting from the store keepers and they'll uh, send you coupons and discounts. Okay, so what happened was one day a particular person came and lashed out at the store manager. It happened in Minnesota. In America so what happened was this person has a 16 year old daughter and uh, in their home he received uh, pamphlets on pregnancy uh, materials on pregnancy maternity things and all discounts and all these things came up to his home and he was very angry so and he came and lashed out at the store manager and told him like are you trying to uh, lose uh, to my daughter, my 16 year old daughter, are you trying to do that? So the store manager was also um, surprised and he was also disturbed. Like their prediction problem program has predicted like that and sent these things to their customers. So he apologized and that person went home. And uh, since they have a very good customer service, they have asked uh, after a week later or maybe some days later, that person has called this particular customer, that father. And uh, that time, 
the man was looking calm and then answered that he didn't know what was happening at home at his home his daughter was indeed pregnant and uh, he what was happening and that person couldn't tell him so what does it mean at that time when you are collecting data also you should keep in mind the privacy of the persons you, that you are involving it that means the privacy of the customers also so this thing particular thing you can have you can give recommendations feel like it will intervene the life of your customers so this is a very hot topic now like uh, european union has passed data user agreement program and and uh, um there is some regulations in what and you can decide in some sites and all you can decide of yours you can share you can stop trackers and all still some data will be collected but this is one thing ethics should be followed when you are doing data science okay you shouldn't invade the privacy of your customers so that also should be made keep kept in mind then next clustering clustering means a technique that involves grouping of data points with similar properties that means in the picture shown there a certain type of shapes and some fruits are there so by color if you are segmenting you can segment it into four by shape regular forms and irregular forms and by bigger size and smaller size so this is known as a clustering similar wherever you find similar properties you'll group them up so another example for this is customer segmentation okay so you might have seen that so you're eligible for ma'am ma'am you're eligible for a gold credit card or a platinum credit card you might have heard like that so based on how much the customer spends and how much they can pay back the cus the bank might be calling the customers and they might be segmenting your customers and giving them like classic plans gold platinum diamond so this customer segmentation is a type of clustering method next is a uh, reinforcement it is slowly picking up this type of learning and uh, it may be majorly used in self driving cars concept so here software agents ought to take actions in an environment in to maximize the notion of cumulative reward so for explaining this i'll be showing a video so i'll just unshare the screen can you uh, see the screen yes okay and uh, can you tell me if you can hear the voice no okay Still, can you hear? No. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You can just watch, and I'll describe. Okay.
okay what it says is that there are two hiders and seekers okay the red one is seeker the blue ones are hide okay these two this is a game open ai plays this game so they have given like two different boxes and there is a um another pointed box which can be getting up okay so you can just see the video on how they are trying to do one of the things which the uh, of the rules or, or the parameters of this game is like like that like if they move these boxes and place it somewhere they can lock the so that it won't it can't be moved again and another thing is that at the start of the game there is some time where the seekers will be locked and they can't move from there so the hiders will have some time to do something okay see what happens so the seekers are winning the majority of the games in these seeks because in the current situation they can come seekers have vision of where the um hiders are okay the blue ones are so after some time like uh, 10000 rounds what they do you can just observe okay after 10000 of runs they have learned that this boxes can be kept here and they have so the hiders were able to block the seekers from getting in and seeing them okay so next this happened for a consecutive am amount of runs and uh, after some time the ai is ai seekers are learning some things you can watch what they do okay so not a pointed structure no so after some of the runs these people will rec uh, recognize its significance okay now what happened they are using this thing to come inside so seekers have again learned how to get in and find the hiders okay now after some time again some happens okay now you have seen that they have brought the pointed object at the start of the um game and they are able to lock them outside okay and a similar thing comes up just then end here see this is another terrain actually so here uh based on the parameters that the programmers have defined they are playing at one time and uh, the seeker didn't find the hider at one at one point for a majority of run then the seeker what they found out that they can get top of so what they find out that find out was they can surf on a box and then come and get inside so this seeker ai has 
uh, broken the cord how have they broken the cord when they formed the program they didn't say or they didn't um, look at the position of the seeker they didn't give a path they should be on the ground nothing was specified so what they did they can climb up a board and they can use that board as and with their weight they can move around the board and come to the hider so this is how ai is learning okay so i'll go back to the presentation so this is a part of reinforcement learning i think you can okay, see the full screen okay googling later so the industries involved in data science these are the different industries to name a few banking and finance healthcare retail and commerce telecommunications energy and utilities and manufacturing so banking and finance i have already pro fraud detection and prevention if there is a particular anomaly in your sp spending then you'll receive a call from the customer service and you'll say that can you confirm this payment or uh, your card will be blocked after this much transaction like that you'll receive a message so that's fraud detection and prevention and that's how they does banking another one is uh, customer segmentation segmenting your customers then risk management and uh, credit default risk assessment so these all things when you apply for a loan they'll find out how much can you um, get get how much can you apply for and this is how they friends they will be doing that so healthcare healthcare is one area in that in the present two years had may gain much momentum like uh, healthcare because of covid 19 they the algorithms which predict how a disease how this virus is spreading how uh, immediately will it reach its peak how will the vaccines will be efficient how much efficient will be the vaccines how is the effect of medications all those things will be had gained much momentum in the present two years so data science is grow it's still growing only data science is not but in healthcare even if there are many cases it's growing only many things can be applied there so in the detection of a disease based on different data you can predict maybe you can predict if there is a risk of getting diabetes cardiovascular disease then if there is a chance of seizure all those things are uh, present hot research topic then genetic analysis genetic analysis means we ourselves in our dna strand um he said to have um huge amount of data in you that means can you tell can anyone tell me how much data is present in a single dna strain if if you know can you put in the chat window yes okay so uh, in a single dna strand you are told to have about when dna sequencing is done about 350 gb of data is present in you so that is a huge amount of data you yourself are carrying with you so for analysis genetic analysis it has a huge potential data science has huge potential then the next another thing is like post surgery survival analysis so when you have done a surgery after that some analysis would be done and depending on that you will find out whether you have a chance of survival. that is based on previous operations as well it is based on previous operations and another thing is epidemic forecasting and control that is what is done now forecasting control and eye health prediction people who are having a surgery eye surgery if they have are diabetic then there is a chance of getting blind due to this increase 
um, of diabetic. So in that case, that is diabetic retinopathy is there. So for that, many research is happening. And uh, so these are the areas in which healthcare has used data science. Next is uh, retail and commerce. Retail and commerce, many different things as market, basket analysis, supply chain, profit prediction prediction of cart abandonment, customer sentiment analysis, sales forecasting. So one of the prominent companies which have used the prediction of cart abandonment, abandonment and have received a great deal of amount of money is uh, Amazon. Sir. So you have seen, right? Cart abandonment means something in your cart when you leave. So to prevent this, they have done a great deal of measures like um, whenever you browse for a product, you'll see that last one in stock or last one, last two in stock, like that you'll be receiving. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's the last one. It has prediction like this might go, but doesn't mean that this is only the last one because at that same time, I have read that uh, about a 500 or uh, more than that, more than 500, people will have shopped for that particular item. But it will be showing like last one in stock. So you need to buy that. You won't put it in the cart and leave. That is one of the things they are doing. And you might have seen like, if you add to the cart and then you have 15 minutes to check out in this deal, but this deal is there for 15 minutes only. So when you see that, you'll feel like buying itself. You won't leave, abandon them. So Amazon has done many different things and they are giving promotion, targeted promotions for doing that. Then customer sentiment analysis, how their sentiments is uh, leaning towards. And based on that, they are giving advertisements. So telecommunications. Telecommunication is one area which have been using their time before the others itself, because telecommunication itself is communicating with different places and transfer of data. So what data science does in telecommunication is that it has customer churn prediction. That means if they have the possibility of people leaving your company, your particular service. So this churn prediction might have, uh, Apple might have done that when Geo came, so because many people have joined Geo. So in that same period, you can you could have seen many different deals and services coming for Airtel. So they were trying to keep their customers. Then next one is detection of network congestion. So if you can predict the congestion possibility earlier, you can do something about it so that the communication won't be stopped. Next will be identification of the network quality. So you can see in your phones, that uh, there is an option, preferred, 4G preferred or 3G preferred or like that. So what it does is that one, in, when you go to a particular area, even if there is a 4G service availability, you'll be getting 3G only. How? They'll be finding that you'll get more coverage in the 3G. So they'll be switching on to 3G, even if that first particular place has 4G in it. Then recommendation of new services, like new plans or anything. Then so this is how data science is used in telecommunications. Next, energy and utilities. So preventive equipment maintenance, that is one of the things where data science is used heavily. And uh, this has helped to get rid of many of the losses due to equipment downtime. So then smart is security and death detection. It has been implemented in many cases. One joke about it is that uh, it was implemented someplace in Bihar. So that the persons have stolen the theft detection equipment itself at, at one point. So, okay, they are trying to improve it. So that is one joke in that. Then real-time customer billing and failure probability modeling, all those that are done in data science uh, in energy and utility sector. 
manufacturing. Manufacturing, you require demand forecasting. Demand, according to your demand, you can manufacture the uh, goods. Okay, and uh, prescription on fault detection. If you know that particular assembly line is going to fail, then you can change or do something about it so that the production won't be disrupted. Then quality assurance. So quality assurance means how this uh, data science and machine learning, particularly image processing, has been done to detect the quality of what is going through the assembly line. So I'll show a small video. And uh, warranty analysis is there. So when you buy some electronic equipment, you can see that this much warranty is there. So how do they find out they can give this much years as warranty? They have the data that your, their equipment won't fail for this period of time. So they can put that put up like as that particular company will be giving one year for your specific product. So just uh, see this small video. Mm, I'll be sharing the link of this one also later. Okay, this is a bottling system. So it reaches, it uses image processing, feature extraction, detection and classification and final decision is made. So, Okay, so we have seen, right? The cap, they have a crack in them. It will be detected using image processing and in the, they'll be find out if some uh, particular bottle is having a lesser quality. And uh, violation of helmets, yes, that, that also will be find out in a manufacturing plant. So next, uh, Moving on to the data science life cycle. That means steps involving, involved in data science analysis. Okay, the first one is business understanding. So business understanding means defining the problem. So when you reach a company or when you do a research, you should first look at what is the intended um objective or what you should be achieving from your specific data and after that you can go on to the next step so business understanding means asking the re relevant questions regarding the problem and defining objectives that need to be tackled so the should be specific and clear next will come data mining I'll go in each of these things. Uh, I'll go through each of these things in detail. So data mining will be collection of data. Data cleaning will be preparing the data for analysis. Data exploration will be going deep into the data and uh, finding out some insights from the data that can be used. Feature engineering will be forming relevant features from the data so that you can do a specific prediction. Next one is predictive modeling. And after that, data visualization is the last step. So each of these things can be looked at separately. So first is business understanding. Then the objectives should be specific and clear at the first level. It's at the first time itself. 
that means when you're getting a problem you should understand the problem first time then only you can draw out specific um, the data that you are that you will be collecting because data collection comes next so you should be knowing what all data you should be collecting you should know to your specific problem what data would be important so that some uh, correlations can be drawn so first that is known as this this step need to be done clearly and completely so that your end goal can be reached next one is uh, data mining mining it means gathering and scraping the data necessary for the project so some common data sources are no sql sql warehouse warehouse hadoop so in our lecture series we will be taking data from files having csv or excel access extension that means an excel file so we'll be using these files only and next one is uh, data cleaning data cleaning means the data that you are getting many different challenges so removing these challenges from your data will make it easier to be analyzed so the con the different data problems are missing data duplicity inconsistent type irrelevant data outliers and formatting so the first one is missing data for for explaining i have taken a an excerpt of a small diabetes data set so it's uh, having an id number a patient number gender the hba1c cholesterol ldl bmi and class there are there were some other features but i'm not including it here right now so you can see the red cells i have highlighted so these red cells maybe when they took the survey they might have an them haven't given answer to that particular question and that result have those those cells being blank so these blank cells if it's directly used will lead to a decrease in your performance i mean after data science the next step coming is machine learning so in machine learning your performance of the algorithm will reduce so you have to do something about this missing data the new data will be seeing the different data types so if it's numeric data you'll be seeing the mean and median of that particular column okay so and we'll be replacing with that column or you'll be finding out you'll be searching for more data or if you can track that particular patient small data set then you can fill it with the correct relevant data so these missing data need to be taken care of so that's the first problem that can come next is duplicity duplicity can be either in rows or columns so i have highlighted data which is coming again that is duplicity so here these two rows are coming at same say at the same time and these two rows are coming so only one of these rows need to be kept when an while analyzing next one is inconsistent type so there can be different inconsistent data types so the example i have shown is bmi the data is coming in inverted commas so bmi is usually a numeric data type it's not a string okay so this mark cell contains string data so this string data should be changed to a numeric data type so that a particular information that bmi information can be otherwise it will remain as a string next is irrelevant data types so here for predicting whether you have a disease or not these two these first two columns id and patient number they don't have any effect on data and also sometimes gender also doesn't have much effect but the one which have no relevance is the id and patient number of the patient so these can be removed before to do some processing on that then outliers outliers that means data that goes beyond permissible values here in example i have given like hba1c usually a 
fit person who doesn't have diabetes have their HbA1c values near 5 or 6, less than 5, five 6 is the uh, preferred one. If you have a range of 9, 11, 12, like that, it's a very uncontrolled type of diabetes you'll be having. So here what mistake has taken during the data collection time is some people have ordered the fasting blood sugar instead of the HbA1c. So when compared to the HbA1c values, this one is an outlier. These two are an outlier. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's right, but it has to be removed when you are analyzing the HbA1c. Formatting. So these issues comes when for the same type, for the same kind of information, different formats of data comes in. The, it's usually seen in the target class, that means the outcome, whether you have diabetes or not. N represents you don't have, and the Y represents you are having diabetes. For these N itself, I mean no class, capital N as well as small n is coming. So this Python program, it's case sensitive. So when you analyze this particular column, you'll be getting four different classes, one capital N, small n, capital Y, and small y. So instead of getting two different like yes or no, you'll be getting four classes, and this has to be changed. Either you have to change small n as capital N, and then you have to analyze, and small y as capital Y, either, or you have to bring the others to the small letters, small caps, smaller case. So this is formatting. So these are the different data cleaning oper operations to be done. Next one is data. Data exploration means we'll be visualizing the data and seeing different patterns and spotting anomalies and we'll form be forming certain hypotheses. For example, here in the previous data, when you see the HbA1c values will have close correlation with diabetes class no. Okay. So like that we can discover some patterns in the data. That is known as data exploration. That is extracting uh, deep data from the data that you have cleaned up. Next is uh, feature engineering. So the data which has explored and find out some relation, all this data is kept in the top. And uh, from there, we have to discard some features which are not, which won't help you in classification. So those uh, unimportant features are removed and meaningful features are constructed. That is known as feature engineering, and then it is followed by data splitting and preparation. Next one is feature creation. For some cases, sometimes we'll do encoding or we'll creating new features from already existing ones. Example is like one product is there, its color is given as red, green, and blue. We'll be making it as a new feature, and we'll be giving new columns as red, green, and blue and we'll be giving binary numbers to it. So this is new feature creation. Next is uh, predictive modeling. So this is where part comes up. So using the data which we have visualized in feature engineer, we'll be training different machine learning models and performance will be evaluated. After evaluating performances, we'll be again tuning over the, it's known as hyperparameter tuning. So that tuning over will be done and again will be evaluated. So this is known as predictive modeling. Then data visualization. So I have given this slide itself in a separate way to give you the importance of visualization. That means you will be finding different data. You will be finding that this person has uh, diabetes or not. And while explaining this to your peers, if you're doing a research then to your fellow research scholars or if you are doing this in a company to your stakeholders, you need to tell them particular features are influencing this particular finding. So if you show them an Excel sheet and if you show them that these particular relations are there, it, will, it won't be easier to explain. So data visualization, 
helps to explain or communicate हेलो ओके ओके विल कंटिन्यू नेक्स्ट विल बी मूविंग ऑन टू द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा also some hands are raised padri padri narayanan do you have a question you can unmute your and ask question okay mistake okay okay then we'll continue then uh, types of data the data is classitative as well as quantitative qualitative it's also known as categorical data and quantitative can be also be Uh, named as continuous data so qualitative it's usually um, different uh, it will be mentioning the quality of that particular okay so it can have a uh, different categories and ca- it can have numerical data also so can anyone say that where quality is measured in the tape in the terms of numerical data can anyone tell me you can put in the chat window i mean numeric data is used to define the quality of a particular service where can you find that okay iq level that's one example yes but it's divided into different categories highly iq yeah any other example you can see it every day yeah customer rating so your products which you are buying will have a customer rating in the range of five stars okay your your product will have a 4.2 3.8 also if you look at the movie ratings you'll have a see an imdb score of 8 or 9 or 7 so this is one example where qualitative data will take the shape of numeric data okay so qualitative or categorical data it's divided into nominal data and ordinal data quantitative is divided as discrete and continuous and we will see each of these in detail so nominal data nominal data it's data related to names and these values are symbols or values are symbols or names also known as categorical data so you can see in this figure housing style hair color gender ethnicity marital status so what the thing what is specific specific thing about these type that there is no order if i give out you a form and in that form you have a field like gender i can put it as male or female or i can put it in the order as female or male there is no specific order for it you can follow any order in giving those data married a single widow or ethnicity okay so that is the nominal data it is a categorical data that doesn't have any order to it but ordinal data is data values that have a meaningful order or ranking example is like in competition a person will reach first second and third it has to be named in that order 
another exam in olympics you will have a gold silver and bronze you will be saying it in that order only you won't be mixing up the things okay then economic status low medium and high grades a b and c elementary education level elementary high school college graduate customer satisfaction that's that's why product quality also four four stars or about three stars or about like that different categorization is there an example is economic status different examples are given there then the next is a uh, numeric data that means it involves in the quantitative thing quantitative it's a first type is interval scale that means it's quantitative in nature with non inherent zero point can be discrete or continuous in nature measured on scale equal quantities can be positive zero or negative for example i have seen the dial of a temperature it's showing as minus 5 degrees celsius so this was the temperature day before yesterday uh let's see i'm living in a very cold country yesterday it was 0 degrees celsius today i'm seeing 4 degrees celsius can you say that uh, today is four times hotter than yesterday can you do that yesterday was 0 degrees celsius today is 4 degrees celsius can you say it's uh, four times hotter or just it's 4 degrees celsius more than yesterday this is the second one no you can't say that the hotness increased four times that means there won't be a specific ratio for this type of data okay you can just say that this is this much more than this level or this much less than this level next type is then ratio scale that means you can give a certain ratio it is quantitative in nature with the inherent zero point it can be discrete or continuous in nature and measured on scale of equal units can be positive zero example is a speedometer when your particular vehicle is stand still to be getting a zero for kmph when you have increased your speed to 60 you can say that your speed has increased 60 times compared to what you were having earlier so here some ratio is present so this is ratio scale number data thing is uh, data structures how your data is divided into like structured data will be there semi structured unstructured graph data and streaming data so structured data means it have a well defined structure it follows a consistent order and should be accessed easily see the figure here and uh, i am i want to access this particular cell that i am pointing so you can say that it's in the third row and in the third column so that particular cell can be accessed by specifying its row and column so it's a tabular data and if this data can be accessed like that and has a structure can be called a structured data you can tell where that position of that data is and it's very rightly labeled and um catalog so that is structured type of data a complete opposite will be unstructured data so what unstructured data includes is that images or text or uh, audio all these thing all these types of data they are in the unstructured category and this unstructured data used in your machine the others also have machine learning but in ai level unstructured data is mostly used like images text natural language processing all these things comes under the unstructured data so the data which is in between these two is semi structured data that means you will have some order but you will have you won't be having you will have some unstructuredness also for example you have a tabular column with uh, some fruits written like apple and its color is written uh, beside the next column like red you have a banana its color is written as yellow and the bat you have some unstructured data coming like carry bag is there coming beneath the fruits and its color given as white so the relation of color is there so some structure is that 
uh, that in that respect but uh, there is no relation between the fruit or the carry bag so some structure is there not fully structured so this is the types according to its structure example is case and data and some organizational properties make it easier to analyze lacks a fixed or rigid schema and unstructured data it's searchable example is a document or an image or video and the fourth type is graph data graph data means it's usually found in uh, linkedin connections you know for is it's a graph data uh, tool actually so nodes edges and properties are used to represent and store data so what it means is that each of the node you will be represented by a node your connections will be represented by bank branches and these different people will be represented by other branches so it will be going on with nodes present so this this type of graph modeling is so mostly used in social media applications next is streaming data so a perfect example is this streaming of this meeting in google meet another thing is the speed test of a network youtube it requires continuous processing and it's continuously generated by different sources so this is streaming data so i think i have done most of the things of in the field of data science and uh, plus i'll be dealing with the programming part of data science that means um uh, i hope i am i assume that uh, you all have a, a certain uh, familiarity with programming in python so next thing will be like i'll be google collab Uh, notebooks and i hope you have done it here or the next class i'll be telling you how to do it, how to do that so if you have any questions you can ask it ask them now in the case of pre recorded sessions uh, you have to ask uh, your faculty arranging uh professor hema kumar ji can you answer them hello thank you thank you are are you going to finish no Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, Anandal, uh, for uh, attending this uh, session. Um, we will continue in the next week. Thank you, thank you, Anandal. Thank you. Okay, one person has asked for recorded video, sir. Uh, one person has asked uh, if we miss a class, can we get pre-recorded versions? Do you have have you recorded? Uh, in the chat window, one person has asked. Yes, uh, yes, 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 sir. Uh, Kanak Agarwal. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I can share you the links of the YouTube videos now. Uh, I'll be posting that in the chat window. Next time, uh, I assume that uh, you have a basic familiarity with uh, Python. I told you. Uh, um those who are here can you answer like um uh, what all ids you have used for python programming um okay so i'll be using Hi, Sam. Okay, keep it in our book and call that. Yes, keep it in our book. So yes, yeah. So I'll be using uh, Google Collab, so so that I can 
present to you also and uh, he'll be learning so i hope everyone in the next class everyone can set up their own google collab notebooks and uh, while we are doing you can try on that okay so next class will be program this theory part is for today class will be program thank you ma'am for your enlightening session it's our privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion on behalf of puducherry technological university i extend a hearty thanks to our chief guest ms lisa sharu johnson who spared her precious time to grace this occasion today we had an opportunity to hear your fascinating lecture and gain some basic knowledge on data analysis with python and this will surely encourage us to learn more on this topic in the upcoming days thank you ma'am dear thank participants uh, i recommend all to kindly fill the feedback form shared in the chat box once you done let's join the next session on our upcoming saturday hope you all excited to learn more thank you thank you Thank you, sir, for organizing the session. Shall I leave the meeting now? Yeah. Yes, you can wind up. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for, uh, sir. Sir, one minute. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next week, we'll continue. Ah, uh, next week we'll join. Thank you.